direct drum clutch pack. What I found works good for my, for my needs and my clearance I wanted. So I'm basically running a uh, the thick direct drum steel. So basically my kit came with five thick I think they're 90, I want to say 90, 91 to 93 thousandths. I don't remember right off the top of my head. Uh, so it gets five thick steels and then five 77 thousandths steels. So what I wanted to do on my direct, because they always talk about using the thickest plates possible to get your stack to the clearance you want on your direct drum. So what I decided to try after like four different uh, methods of trying to get the clearances I want on my forward and my direct was I'm going to do three thick steels and two 77,000 steels. So basically it would be thick, clutch, then you're going to have one of the thinner 77,000 steels just basically got to play with these things because for some reason you think that it would just go in in, in any any configuration but that would be wrong and if you try to force this down in there you can actually get it stuck and that's a pain in the neck don't ask me how I know because no I would not try to force that in there and, and get hung up and really get pissed off I would not do that no so basically what I did was I started with a thick, what they call direct steel, and then I just alternated thick steel, um, clutch friction, thin, you know, you get the pattern. I don't want to have to sit here and just say it, but so I'm ending up using, what I'm using is, in the end, is three of the 90, I'm going to say it's like 92 thousandths thick, I can't remember, steels and two 77 thousandths steels. And I'm going to show you where it puts me at, if I can ever get this thing to, to want to go in here. It's so weird because you'll sit here and try to put this in there and you'll think, oh yeah, this goes blah, blah, blah. Put it to a certain area of the drum, it'll fall right in. So when you see people picking those up and then just going bam, bam, and just throwing them in real fast, it's because they already know ahead of time from probably the first steel they threw in where they want to orientate it and they can just throw them in there. It makes you think that you can just pick them, pick them up and put them in however you want and that's not really how that works. So what I was going for on this lug, I want the top clutch because you end up with a clutch then your pressure plate you want that clutch to be dead even with the top of this metal lip okay that is dead across and if you ever second guess yourself you can take this and set it up on end or not on end sorry set it on side and look down and it's literally dead even with that top of that lug because when you look at this lug it's got a bevel it sits at an angle like this then it hits the downward part of the of the drum so you've got this shiny area here that's a bevel and then there's a little bit of a, an edge and it goes straight vertical so what you want to do, and this has worked for me, and if, you, if you've done any research online, you'll be able to see there's other transmission builders that say this is, you know, this is how they set them up without jacking around with all those stupid uh, feeler gauges all the time. And feel free to double check this stuff. Here's my direct clutch pack. I'm using three direct steels, two forward steels, and then five of the waffled red Raybestos frictions. Okay, it's about a 45. It's got a little bevel to it. 
then there's a, there's a, a, a transition where it goes straight vertical. This friction is exactly flat. And I don't mean kind of flat, I mean it's exactly with that transition from that vertical surface to the drum. That is the recommended position for a street strip racing style transmission. Um, these clutches will wear in to a certain degree during its initial uh, usage and break-in process. So you'll gain just a hair more clearance once it gets to, uh, broken in, but that's a, a clutch pack that's not going to be super tight like a factory original clutch pack that came in the full size pickup trucks that were meant for towing and the big luxury cars that these transmissions came from they weren't experiencing high horsepower high rpm they just needed everything to grab and pull around four to six thousand pound vehicles plus capacity and tow and all that junk but in the videos i've seen shooting for that transition from your friction to your drum gives you the clearance you're wanting. I am shooting for 50 thousandths clearance, so I will put this all together and verify where I'm exactly at. Right. Got my forward clutch assembly completely assembled with 40 thousandths clearance. And I've got my direct drum set up with 50 thousandths clearance, and it took a lot of trial and error and switching uh, thick and thin steels and I don't know, it almost seemed like it changed even if you switched uh, frictions between the two. I don't know, I just kept playing with it until I got 40 here, 50 here, and it's ready to put in the transmission. Moving on to the okay. next step. Let's do the intermediate clutch pack. <clears throat> I've started out with a steel, then one friction, and again, you alternate steels and frictions. Kind of strange how that all the other one gets five clutches. And granted, the intermediates are bigger in diameter, but they only get three. So apparently, in the grand scheme of things, the intermediate clutches don't do a whole heck of a lot or else they would have more they would have more beef and more clutch material so that's basically what we got right there and we got our make sure it's perfectly clean we got our pressure plate and keep in mind you want to make sure you did not confuse a case saver plate or some kind of smaller thickness uh, snap ring because they're recommending the snap ring for this intermediate clutch kit pack or whatever to be I think it's supposed to be 95 to 100 thousandths 100 thousandths preferred but that doesn't really you know, I don't know that a hundred thousandths uh, snap rings for this assembly are all that easy to come by. So let me get this thing settled in here and I'll show you what's, what okay. I'm talking I finally got that thing happy. Apparently it had one set of lugs it wanted to be in and that was it. So <laughs> that was a little bit Okay fine. there, I got a, I actually got lucky because the factory Pontiac intermediate snap ring retainer was only 92 92 thousandths thick but the retaining ring hopefully you can see the ends of it from the 69 chevy truck turbo 400 was 95 thousandths thick winner so i've got my intermediate clutch pack installed and here's a neat trick I saw I found online that shows you how you can check your clutch pack clearance on your intermediate is go in between your
pressure plate and your snap ring, it will give you the same measurement as going between the uh, bottom of the pressure plate and the actual friction material. And it's a lot easier to do to measure up here. I'm just gonna show you by example. It's easier to measure here than it is to go underneath this thing and lift it up and get an accurate measurement, but you can do it either way. So keep that in mind. Moving on. Just a quick glimpse of what I'm talking about. To check your intermediate clutch pack clearance, go in between the top of your low pressure plate and your retaining ring, and you can find your clearance. 